Hello everyone, I hope you had a good week. Um, I've recorded another video, this one on the next topic um, in Eikyu Hyakushu, next summer topic, which is summer grasses, Natsukusa. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Now, grasses, kusa here, um, is more of a general name for a variety of plants, so plants which weren't in fact trees. So another possible translation for this topic would be summer plants. Summer, natsu as a season in Japan, is connected poetically with heat, um, with lushness of plants, and with a variety of different kind of natural sounds. Um, but this topic focuses very much on the plants which uh, grow lushly, wildly, thickly in Japan in the summer as a result of the preceding rainy season and the general heat and good weather. Um, although, as we shall see uh, when we look at some of the poems as we come through them, that the um, poets sometimes tended to try and bring in some other ideas as well. Shizu no me ni ohagitsumete shi haru no no ni Natsu wa kusane no wakate yadori nu. A peasant girl has picked fresh bush clover in the springtime fields, where, in the summer, to sleep among the grasses, have I parted them and found lodging. So here we see um, Akinaka as a poet bringing in a different kind of theme to the um, vegetative and summer imagery. The erotic image of the peasant girl who has picked fresh bush clover. Um, so the idea, I think, which is conveyed through his, uh, his poem here is visiting there afterwards, sleeping on the grass, among the grasses, finding lodging with her, perhaps. Um, and lodging, of course, is a euphemism for making love with her. Kudara no no, chigayagashita no hime yuri no, nedokoro hito ni shirare nu zouki. On Kudara Meadow, beneath the Kogon grass, is where a scarlet lily makes her bed, that no one is aware is sad indeed. Now, there's a number of different elements in this poem. Um, Nakazane mentions a specific location, Kudara no. Um, now, in fact, no one really knows quite where this is, other than that it was in the western part of um, Yamato Prefecture. So, roughly somewhere between... Um, Nara, Osaka, and Kyoto in, in modern times. Um, Kudara, in fact, is a name for one of the ancient um, Korean kingdoms, and it's thought that this location in Japan got the name as a result of um, foreign dignitaries being lodged there on their way to visit the capital. Now, with that sort of um, scene set by the location, he then brings in the image of the Kogon grass. Now, Kogon grass is um, pampas grass, essentially, it's something that grows very high, very thickly. You can easily get lost in it. Um, and it's used in any number of different poems and has a number of different names um, which are used in poetry. Um, Chigaya is the one which is actually used here. If you look up Chigaya on the website, you'll find any number of poems which, uh, which use it. And so you can get a sense of the images which it conveys. Um, but to this image of the thick concealing grass, um, I, and it really is concealing, it can grow taller than a person, um, he then adds this image of the scarlet lily, the himeyuri. Now, himeyuri literally translates as princess lily. So again, there's a very strong image of um, it, the flower being equivalent to a young woman. Oh, and I've tried to uh, encompass or bring that in by using makes her bed in the next line. So, in one sense, um, Nakazane is saying, you know, there's a, a beautiful secret flower which is hidden among the grasses. Um, how sad it is that no one knows about it. But, of course, with the um, strong association of the lily with a young girl, um, he's being somewhat disingenuous, you know, that somewhere hidden on Kudara me um, Meadow, somewhere where people don't know about him, there's a beautiful girl. Um, and is it sad that no one knows about her? Well, obviously he knows about her. So he's actually saying, it, it's sad? Well, no, not really, because I know about her and th that she's my personal secret. Hizakari wa kakine gakuri ni tachi de Tare o koigusa moe tateran. The searing summer sun cannot the secrets of my brushwood fence draw near, so who, by love's fiery grasses, has been set aflame? 
Now, Toshiyori in uh, this poem refers to a plant called Koigusa. Um, now, in fact, we've got no idea what this plant actually was. So what it looked like, um, what it actually was, is a complete mystery to us. Nobody knows. Um, it's actually, though, not that important in terms of what it looks like, because the poem, sorry, the name of the plant itself, Koi, means love, and Gusa means grass. So its primary use in poetry is to introduce the idea of love into a poem. Now, why love's fiery grasses um, has been set aflame at the end there? Well, Koi um, as it would, is how the word will be read in modern Japanese, but... Uh, Back in the days of the poets who were writing this kind of work, it would have been read kohi, or kofi, and fi is homophonous with the word for flame. So you'll find in any number of poems um, close allusions between koi, fire, um, koi, love, and fire, he, and so forth. And that's what um, Toshiyori is uh, um, building on, this image of love setting um, the poet aflame with passion um, in his poem. Um, again, I think he's being disingenuous um, in his uh, in his um, poem here. It's a purely rhetorical question. Who, by love's fiery grasses, has been set aflame? Who else but me? So, hidden behind I'm the brushwood fence in my house in summertime, I'm lying there, um, burning with passion, which no one else knows about. Um, you know, and I can't wait for the night when possibly I could go and see the uh, girl that I love. Natsuyama no susono no kusaya fukakaram wakekuru hito no sode no tsuyuke tsuyuke sa. In the summer mountains, is it that the grasses on the skirting slopes seem so thick? Parting them upon his way, a man's sleeves are drenched with dew. Now, again, here Tadafusa uses a technique um, which is known as engo in Japanese, evocation. Um, so word association essentially as well. In the tsuso, um, which refers to the foothills or slopes of a mountain, also contains um, the word su, which means skirt. Um, and so he then introduces this image of, potential image or evocation of a sense of clothing in the beginning of the poem, and then follows it up and reinforces it with a specific mention of sode, sleeves, um, at the end there. Um, again, though, it, this is a simple description of a natural scene with uh, the traveller on his way, having to push his way through grasses um, which have grown thick, so thick and lush with summer that it has drenched his uh, sleeves with the dew. Um, this is a very standard kind of stock image in poetry of um, sleeves getting wet with dew when one half has to go through them. Natsukusa no shigeri ni keri na, yaku yaku to haru mise nobe no michimado made. The summer grasses have grown lush indeed, until at last upon the fields I saw in spring the paths are entirely lost. Um, a simple natural description here. Um, he's been to a place in the springtime where there's clear paths across the plain or across the fields. But with the summer growth, everything has vanished and all he can see is the waving fields of grass. Mi wataseba mukai no oka no natsukusa o tagaka o koma no tame ni karuram. When I gaze across the distant hills, the summer grass, for whose mounts will it be reaped, I wonder? Now, in one sense, I mean, this is a very sort of prosaic and standard poem of the poet gazing across a, in, across a distant prospect. Miwataseba is a very common beginning for poems where the poet is actually looking across a broad sweep of space. But um, I find this quite evocative, um, given that the poet um, he got is a woman, a lady. Um, women, of course, live relatively constrained lives and weren't able to leave with their dwellings or houses um, very often. And when they were in their houses, they were very often hidden behind blinds and curtains and in darkness. So one wonders why he got, why has this lady been able to go out of and away from her home, probably on a visit to a temple or something like that. So one can imagine her getting into her ox cart with all the excitement of a special um, trip away from home, something so interesting and exciting, being able to see new sounds, sorry, see new sights, hear new sounds. Um, she creaks through the streets of Kyoto, um, leaves the capital, goes up through the hills, and they come to a, a prospect where there's a distant view. So 
she has her carriage halted, um, the blinds lifted, and she gazes out at a scene which uh, she would um, never normally be able to see. Um, the sheer distance um, really strikes her. Um, what can she see? She can see the lush grasses growing in, in the fields away and wonders who, for whose is this grass going to be reaped? Maybe she's even seeing peasants out there with sides cutting the grass and wondering for whom they're doing it. Um, so what can she feel? The excitement, the stimulation of this poem um, produced uh, in, the, in this lady by the seeing the scene. Furu Satono, Shizuke Kiniwani, Natsuku Sano, Tokoro Egao ni Shigeru Narikeri. In the ancient estate's quiet grounds, the summer grasses, so self satisfied, have grown thickly. I think this is a lovely little poem. Um, again, is this um, the lady's own? Daishin is, of course, a court lady. Is it her own estate, which uh, she's in? So a slightly run-down affair, uh, but comfortable. Um, she's on her own. Um, she's had the uh, shutters raised so she can actually look out across the grounds. When she says quiet there, she means not that it's quiet in the sense that it's silent, but that it's quiet in that she can't hear the sounds of humanity around there, because, of course, the Japanese summer is never silent. There's always um, insects chirping away and things like that. Um, so she's looking at the a purely natural scene out of her a window, um, a window from the the veranda of her of her her house, um, and seeing the grass grown up thick around it, um, waiting to be reaped, um, and seeming very pleased and happy with itself. And that's the image that I get from this. Um, of course, it equally could be that she's um, been passing through the streets of Kyoto, perhaps um, seen a tumble down estate and stopped to take a walk and have a little visit in there. Um, that would be, I think, less usual. Um, that's not the kind of women didn't travel around that much and it might not have been so possible for her. And of course, there was all the, always the risk for unwary people wandering into um, tumble down houses or ancient estates that there might be an oni, a demon um, living there who will be only too happy to gobble up a choice morsel. So anyway, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this little talk um, and uh, look forward to some poems next week. <laughs>